little group for my last video of the year, 2021. I am going to talk about some of the tools that I use to help me find uh, faint fuzzies. Whether it's uh, a planetarium software, astrometry.net, uh, even Cyril. Uh, sometimes don't show all the targets that are in your images. And for whatever reason, uh, it's very hard to find those targets. And I've found a couple of tools, one being Cyril, the other being Aladdin Desktop. Uh, that's more of a professional tool, but it's not that difficult to use, that have helped me to identify uh, some of these targets. Doesn't find them all. I don't know why. Uh, maybe the database is something to do with the databases. It's beyond my scope, my little feeble artistic mind. And uh, what I will do is try to show you a couple of ways that you can uh, get some coordinates that you can bring in to start finding uh, what these targets could be. So I'll open up Cyril. <clears throat> And because I have, uh, and I will uh, get rid of my puss here. Because I already have some data that's got coordinates embedded in it from Nina, I will open up a FITS file. And this FITS file is from my uh, Mortal 9 data. That's not the best data in the world, but it is usable for this demonstration. So I'll do a quick uh, stretch on it. Okay, now I'll do this. And uh, like I said, because uh, I shot these images in Nina, the coordinates data is already embedded in the FITS header file for this image. And I will use the color calibration, photometric color calibration tool to find the coordinates. <clears throat> And I will do that by just clicking on uh, get the metadata for the Im from the image. And you'll see that it's filled in the RA and the deck information and the uh, focal distance and pixel size for the camera that was used, which was the DS24. So I'll click on OK. <clears throat> And you'll see that these two items down here have unghosted. And that tells me that the target has been plate solved. And if we click on the show object names, we will get objects showing up. Our name is for the objects in the image, but it has not found all of the objects like this or this one, or even this one. So what I want to do uh, before I get too far is remove the green, do a quick banding reduction, because there is some horizontal banding here. That helps. And now we have our color image. We still have a little green tinge, but that's for my light pollution, but it will not affect what we are going to try to do. So you want to be on the green channel because with a 
one shot color camera that's generally the cleanest image uh, because you have two greens versus one red and one blue. So I will turn on the uh, the names and what I want to do is try to find out what this is. So what I'm going to do is select this area, right click and then uh, select PSF. And what this PSF will do is it will show you, it gives you a bunch of information on this area. Uh, da, 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 da. And I accidentally one day hit on this more details button and it brought me to this. And that is because it's carrying the coordinates over to the Sinbad uh, database, it tells me what this target is. So I'm going to copy, go back to Cyril, and then I'm going to right click again and then search for the object and then paste in the name and hit enter. And what should happen is, and it did, it put the name of the target and a locator. So if I zoom in here, you can see that it's put the location of the target along with its name on the unnamed target. So let's try that with this guy down here this is also a faint fuzzy. We'll go more details and we'll see that this target is called LIDA 441041. We'll copy this. We'll go back to zero. We will do another search for targets or search for object. We'll paste in, hit enter, and we should get a name. Oops, it did not find it. So let me just, that's my bad. There we go. That was me, not the program. We'll go back to Cyril. We'll do another search. We'll paste in, hit enter, and boom. And we got one over here, so we'll go for this one. Select PSF. Oops, I forgot to close this first. And this has got a really wacky name. We'll copy this. Go back to Cyril. Do another search. Paste it in. Hit enter. And boom. We have now found the targets of interest that were not named now have names. Now, the one thing that I'm not finding in this is you're not getting the true uh, uh unless i that's it i don't really think it is the true magnitude of this target uh and if i go back to uh aladdin 
I'm not finding any magnitudes being listed here. And what it looks like they're doing is um, showing redshifts, which doesn't help me one bit. A flux or magnitude. That this this stuff doesn't help me at all. I'm not a scientist. What I'm for those of the science backed or based uh, methodology. If they if you can help me figure out how to figure out what the magnitude is. I can't search. I've done searches based on this number, and I don't get any results. So if any of these astrophysicists or just plain old guys that have a lot more math abilities than I do can help an artist out figure out where, where the magnitude data is in this, <laughs> I would appreciate it. But... I was able to show you that using these tools or this tool, you can get targets name. Now what happens is uh, because these targets were not in the uh, original database as soon as you add them they get added into a uh, if you go to astrometry they get added into a user catalog in this user catalog you can turn on and off so if i turn this off and then apply you'll see those names disappear and if i go back and turn on the user catalog and apply it, they come back. So if you think your user catalog is defective or you just don't want it anymore, you can actually purge the user catalog of all the, the uh, work that you've done by just selecting this. Purge the catalog, hit apply, now they're gone. So what I want to do is show you another way to actually uh, plate solve, or I'm take an image that has uh, coordinates data into another application to find out what your targets are. So I'll leave this image here, but I will, what I wanna do is save it with another name. And I will put it on the desktop and we'll call it target test we'll save it keep it at 32 bits save anyway we'll close this down and I want to go to a program that's called Aladdin desktop and Aladdin desktop is a what I would call a professional astronomers tool uh, <clears throat> And what we can do is load that image I just saved with the coordinates information in it. And here it is. It's cycling through the RGB channels. So we'll shut that off. Oh, shoot. I forgot to save. Sorry. We're going to have to stretch it. So let me do a quick stretch. We'll resave it. Save. Replace. Save. My bad. We'll go back to Atlanta. I will delete this image. We'll load in another one. Is better. Okay, so we'll stop this. And uh, 
this is the same image that was in Cyril. It, the only thing it really has is the header file. So if we go to the astrometrical uh, database, we have the coordinates here. And this WCS header information is where it's usually getting that information from. Uh, now I can load a database in Aladdin, and I'll use the Sinbad astronomical database right here. I want to do what's in the view of this image. Uh, I don't want the whole database to be loaded. That could take a while. And you will see that my faint little fuzzies have been found. So that one's found, that one's found, and that one is found right here. So what I can do is select this. Make sure I'm in the select mode. And you'll see down here it says Galaxy. There's our name. If I copy this, go back to Sinbad. Or, I'm sorry, Cyril. Let's see if it will work. And yes, it did. It knew the coordinates of that target. So let's try another one. We'll do this one. We'll copy that. Oops. We'll do another search. Paste in our target, hit enter. And it found that one. So now we'll try for this guy here, or Gail. And this is a LIDAR object. We'll copy that. We'll go back to Cyril. We'll do another search. We'll paste it. And it's found that. So now these targets are back in my user uh, uh, catalog and they will stay until I purge it. So if I turn these off and apply it, they go away. If I turn them back on, they will stay. So that this is two ways to find out what those targets are and how you can get that information into Cyril to use the name uh, name uh, or, or show the names of the targets. And then what you can do is uh, like Howard did, where he actually created all of his stuff. You can save this image. So let's go to RGB and uh, I want to take a snapshot of the displayed image. I want to save it as a unique file and it's called it this. So if I go, I don't have one open. It's saving it in my serial working directory. So I want to look for, what time is it? 12.25. Here it is. And there's the, all the names of the targets. And they are marked with little arrows or little crosses. So that's a way that you can actually uh, automate your uh, naming of targets one way. So what I will do is just get rid of these like so. And get rid of these like so. 
So now what I want to show you is, let's say you actually used Mellencamp Sky and uh, you saved the image as a JPEG. So I will load this same image that's a JPEG and the JPEG will not have any of the location data. So we'll take this one here and we'll open it. And it's an RGB image. Uh, it's a color image. This is a processed image. And if I go to the green channel and then pl uh, I want to plate solve it, I don't want to do a photometric color calibration. I actually just want to plate solve it. So we'll click on the plate solve. And I am going to enter NGC 7319. And I'm going to pick the Sinbad. And that's correct. And we'll, we want to keep our eyes out down here. When it gets plate solved, this will highlight. And it just highlight. So we can close this. So this stuff is now plate solved. And you'll see that my names are there. And if uh, uh, what I will do is, oops, sorry. Go to preferences. I will purge the catalog. And because it's now plate solved, I can do the same thing that I did in, uh, well, let's do this the first way. Go back to zero. And let's just see what we can get here. We'll do a PSF. We'll do a more detail. And it's found the name, like so. We'll copy it. Go back, we'll do a paste, or I'm sorry, a search, hit enter, and there it is. And let's say that I want, now that this target has been plate solved, what we can do is actually go uh, to Aladdin. And let me just delete these two. Bing, bing. And in Cyril, what I want to do is save the current object in a, in a different name. I will call this target test. And the reason why I'm doing this is that this might have been just a little bit of a different crop than the uh, image that I processed to do a quick stretch on. So you want to have the same uh, image scale, otherwise your targets are going to be in the wrong spot. So I will load that image. Right here. We'll click on this here. Do it load. And that's the one we got. Let's get this guy. Copy, we'll go to Cyril, we'll do a search, we'll paste in the name, we'll hit enter, and there it is. And we can do the same thing with this one over here. So let's do that. I think it's this one, yep.
copy. We'll do a search. Hit enter. And boom, it's found all our targets. So that is another way that you can bring in uh, data from Mellon Cave Sky into Cyril, plate solve it, and uh, you can drag out a box like I did for this one, or you can load, uh, once you plate solve the image, you want to save that image as a FITS file. And then that FITS file can then be loaded into Aladdin. The image scale is the same. The coordinate system is the same. And then by loading the uh, Sinbad Astrono Astronomical Database, uh, when you click on this target, whoops, it will bring up the right nomenclature for the galaxy. And this came from the Di Gaia survey, so this is deep. Well, maybe not deep. Interesting how they science guys figure this stuff out but then you can do uh, a copy and then a search and it will find the data because the two images are uh, the same same coordinate system the same size and you can go between either or app it makes for quite an interesting little uh, project. And as I said, you can save this data by uh, taking a snap of the screen, saving it as a unique name, and then you can open it and you will see all of your uh, image information embedded in the image, which you can then upload into uh, Mellow Cape Sky. So I hope that uh, I was a fairly good teacher in this. It's kind of convoluted. I just found out about Aladdin Desktop over the weekend, and there's a lot there to learn. <laughs> there's a lot of databases, a lot of, a lot of stuff in there. But for my needs, I just want to know what the targets are. And then from there, I can hope to maybe find out what the magnitudes are. LIDAS shouldn't be too difficult. So if I go back to, we'll pick this one here. We'll copy this. Let's see what this does. Let's type in galaxy, G-A-L-A-X-Y. Maybe that'll help. Maybe not. Lida, what's the number? No, it's not finding it. Oh, weird. Maybe if I go galaxy on the back end. See what happens. No, nope, just ain't working. And I have the same trouble with Google, so it's not a Bing thing. I just am not smart enough to figure out how to find out what these things are. So if there's anybody in the group that uh, can help a, an artist out, I would be more than uh, happy. Here's relative velocity and redshifts, and that's. Uh, it seems like they use redshift a lot. Redshift don't help me. <laughs> I don't know what redshift is. And I don't want to know what redshift is. I want to know what the magnitude is. So, uh, again, I hope that this has helped uh, those that wish to know what their faint fuzzies are. And 
uh, had no way of knowing how to find out what those faint fuzzies are, gives this little uh, little session gives you enough information to uh, start looking in the right places to, to be able to mark out what those faint fuzzies are. But the big thing is you need the coordinates of the image, which you got to plate solve it to get that. And then once the image is plate solved, you can either do it in Cyril or save that image as a FITS file and then bring that into Aladdin desktop. So I want to wish everyone a happy holiday and uh, we'll see you in the group. Thanks.